We're back. I'm back. Who are you? I don't know. I ask that every single day when I look in the mirror. Who are you? Nice are new you pair of glasses. Yourself? I do have this pair of glasses. I have the. I have. It's like if C.S. Lewis decided not to take care of himself for a couple of years. <laughs> this is the look you get. So it's fantastic. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, it's good. I went and looked for the glasses. You know, I had the like the mega church pastor uh-huh. glasses. I didn't those want those. Squares, yeah. The Elton John glasses. Allison didn't let me get those, so we settled on C.S. Lewis glasses. This is the in between pair. I think so it works. It works out. I, works it works out. I can see well. things now. Uh, and Patrick, you are beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I yes. appreciate it. So. We're back for episode three uh, of this season of There and Back Again, talking about all the things that happen in the world that we have to deal with in our daily life, Sunday to Sunday. Pastor Hole. Yes. What do you think about college debt forgiveness? I think it's awesome. Well, it's it's interesting, right? You know, so last week. Wait, now, time out. Stay out of the comments. This isn't a political podcast. All right. Get, time, in. There you time, go. In, like, time in, time in, time in. Dude, I'm an old school say by the bell guy. You got to time in. I'm like, I'm sitting here waiting. Thank you. Oh, that was scary. <laughs> who knows how long we would have been here. Um, but who is it? That's my daughter knocking on the door. We can keep that in, I guess. I yeah, do we'll have a keep daughter. that in. It's surprising she didn't rush in and throw something at us. Probably trying to get in and get our Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. But... I mean, you look at the political reality of this. So President Biden last week, last week, the week at, I can't remember exactly when. Two weeks He ago. came on and talked about yeah. uh, this, this program he wants to do where they forgive up to ten dollars to $20,000 of student loan debt. And, I mean, it created a bunch of political arguments on each side. So mm-hmm. we're not approaching it from that perspective. You're going to hear enough of that on every different angle. If you want that, go listen to Ben Shapiro on it or something. Mm-hmm. You know, he'll probably talk about it. We're not. We're talking theologically about this. And when I was on TikTok, it's all over TikTok, all these pastors talking about it. And they're comparing the forgiveness Christ gives us to debt forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And it's something we should just do because we're Christians. But there's a problem with that is the forgiveness of these debts is not the full debt, but partial debt. It's not, okay, let's say someone has $90,000 worth of student loan debt. Okay, we're going to forgive all 90000 It's yeah. gone. Nothing's going to show up on your credit report. You know, because it, it, I'm more than likely this probably will show up somewhere, I'm assuming, that this has been forgiven. Yeah. So, but it's not going to be on your credit report. It's not going to be, it's gone. That's not what's happening. And if you compare that to Christ, then we're saying Christ partially forgives our sins, mm-hmm. and then he keeps record of it. Because mm-hmm. there's going to be a record of this. Whoever got their loans forgiven, yeah, it's it'll written be down on somewhere. file, yeah. you were forgiven this. That's mm-hmm. not what happens with Jesus. He forgives, and that sin, like it says in Micah 7, is dra- it's cast into the depths of the sea. Psalm 103, it's as far removed as the east is from the rest. Uh, the prophet Zechariah, Jeremiah, Zechariah, Jeremiah, one of the di- one of the ayahs. I will remember their sin no more. Mm-hmm. So the reality is, we can't make the jump from... We need to do student loan forgiveness because that's the Christian thing to do because Christ does that for us. Mm -hmm. Well, no, he fully forgives us. And also, it's not law. It's not like it's this legal thing you now have to do. Jesus does it because he's merciful. Yep, it's the gospel reason. Yeah, it's gospel driven. So when you look at how can Christians respond to student loan forgiveness... Really, the best place to go is the parable of the unjust steward. And the unjust steward, right, he he's gets called to account by his master. The master's mm-hmm. mad at him, so he goes and he starts forgiving part of people's debts. He This guy o- like owes 100 things of oil. He says, sit down and write 50. This guy owes 100 things of wheat. Sit down and write 80. Mm-hmm. And he sends them away saving some money. Yep. And their, part, their burden is partially lifted. And the point of the parable of the unjust steward or unrighteous steward or unrighteous manager, however you say it, is how you view all the things God gives you in this life that are related to this temporal existence, Mm -hmm. like money. God doesn't give you money to store up and do what you want to with it. He gives you everything so that you may serve and love your neighbor, whoever that neighbor may be. And right now, there's a clear example that there's a lot of people who go to college that come out with a ton of debt. They'll never be able to repay it. They'll never be able to repay it. And while they're trying to repay it, they're 
so anxious, so worried, so stressed. Mm -hmm. And I almost approached it this one way. I said, actually helping someone get rid of their debt is trying to help someone keep the first commandment. Because you're because the, your debt can become a god. It's that god, and then it yep. just creates anxiety all the time. Yep. You are always worried about it, and you're always like concerned, "What's going to happen to me?" Mm -hmm. So, with the unjust steward, he helped people that were in his life, those who owed money to his specific manager. Yep. So Christians shouldn't say, "Well, I paid off my loans by myself, so these people just need to do it too." I did it, so they need to do it. Yep. Bear your own load. I mean. Paul does say that in Galatians 6, let each one carry his own burden. But he's talking to you as an individual, meaning don't you expect a handout from someone. Mm -hmm. But what does he say just two verses prior to that in verse 2? He says, bear one another's burdens and thus fulfill the law of Christ. <clears throat> so we shouldn't compare student loan forgiveness to our forgiveness in Christ. But rather, because we're forgiven in Christ, freed from everything, if you know someone that's going through this. So we, yeah, we should seek people out that we know that are having yeah. a hard time with these issues like student debt and seek them out and then search for ways to help them. Yeah. Well, and, and, and this is the thing I even thought about. Even if it's someone you don't know, we're, we're clinging to something that we're like, oh, I'm going to have to pay this now. And I'm going to have to. I'm, I'm a middle class guy, so I'll probably have to pay something toward it with taxes. But it gets to like, oh, what's it's, it's not a biblical quote, but it's... Uh, a good society is when old men plant trees in which they know they will never sit in the shade of. So you help knowing you may never benefit from this personally. Yep. You may not even know who you're helping, but that doesn't stop you from doing it. You're freed in Christ just to unconditionally love your neighbor yep. as Christ loves you. So I guess looking at this student loan forgiveness debate, instead of picking a side and then trying to theologize that side, either for it or against it, mm -hmm. and then come up with Bible verses that... Support that yeah, specific opinion, you know, no matter what it is. You know, proof texting your own yeah. worldview. Who are you in Christ, the Sunday to Sunday? Well, you're a forgiven saint who still struggles with sins, who's absolutely forgiven everything you've done. And you are a recipient of the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. That's who you are. So who are you then for your neighbor? You are Christ for your neighbor. Right. You bear the burden of your neighbor, and you joyfully do it, because then they rejoice in their vocation. Mm -hmm. Yes, with that debt free. Now, some of them may abuse it. Some people may get free of that student loan debt and then go get in some other type of debt. Well, don't you do that on Sunday? You get forgiven unconditionally, then and you then go out and go and sin. do yeah. this. So like I said, I'm not taking a side, either pro or con, Democrat, Republican, or whatever. It's there is a need for people who need help and if you've been given the means by which to help them, be it writing a check and canceling their debt, mm -hmm. just like Christ writes Colossians 2, 13 through 15, I believe, right? Nailing the debt to the cross, canceling out the debt. If that's you, great. You may not have the money. Well, then bear the cross with your neighbor and suffering this anxiety and reminding them who they are in Christ that it's mm -hmm. going to be okay. Yep. It's going to work out, whatever that may be. So I, I guess my encouragement is don't go to things like, the forgiveness Christ gives you and that equates to this political situation right. instead of who are you in Christ and what does that mean and how you live and love your neighbor so so at least what I think thanks be to God fun times right baby it's All fun right. times there we go that's our episode for this week check us out next week uh, follow us on social media uh, at higher things check us out on YouTube check us out uh, on our website we've released two fantastic items uh, this past week confirmation class uh, three years now available uh, we've also just released retreat in the box two uh, over the apostles creed check them out on our website That's pretty good. fancy yeah fun times. we'll talk to you later see you next week Peace. Zane.